Coming up on this edition of Community Insider, we take you on a wagon train. That's the Middle Tennessee Mule Skinners Wagon Train, a wonderful two-day event, and we go behind the scenes. I'm Jonathan Womack, along with John Colin Womack. Stay tuned to that and much more on this edition of Community Insider. Edition of Community Insight. Join us as we travel Middle Tennessee, uncovering history and experiencing the adventure of unique stories and events coming to you inside your community. Tennessee Mule Skinners usually has two wagon trains a year, one in the spring and one in the fall. They continue this great tradition, getting families together to camp out and enjoy the wagon train with some great food, great music, and great fellowship. I'm Kerry King. I'm the vice president of Middle Tennessee Mule Skinners. And uh, this is my second year having this ride here at my place, where well, it's my parents' place. And uh, I just like to uh, carry on the generation of the mules and horses or whatever to get together and have a good time. And uh, I guess I've come a long, long way. It's skips in generations, but my great great grandpa, A.B. Painter, full of mules, and I got his show wagon, and it's still original, and it's 40 something years old, but it just hand me down to me and I've got it now. And uh, so I just try to carry on with it. It's a lot of hard work, but it's really fun after you get, you know, you stuff harnessed up, get them hooked up, and get out with good friends. You meet good, you know, different people all the time. And, you know, it's fun. Just get out and enjoy yourself. And, uh, but I wanna thank everybody that's helped put this association on. And we cooked tonight, I cooked, and we had a bunch of people, you know, just, just volunteer to bring food out here so we just have a good time. But last year we had a good friend, Matt Mose, and uh, I want to do donate this to him, this whole ride. He was a really good friend of all of us, and uh, we really miss him. But uh, he was a really good uh, meal guy. I mean, he was just straight up with everybody. He was, a, he used to be a horse trainer, and um, I've learned a lot from him. And Danny Vaughn here, he's a good friend of ours, and um, he's got a couple of things to say about what we've done in the past, and uh, so I'll just turn it over to him. Hello, my name is Danny Vaughn, and uh, like Kerry said, uh, I belong to the Middle Tennessee Mule Skinners as well, uh, and. Uh, like Kerry said, you know, this this is something that's, uh, you know, uh, the, the generation now doesn't really do a lot of this. You know, this is, this is kind of old school. Uh, like he said, you know, we do mowing uh, with the old uh, horse-drawn mowing machines. We do plowings and uh, we just all get together and have a plowing and a mowing. Uh, 2018, this uh, organization, Middle Tennessee Mule Skinners, uh, we set out to break the world record for the most mules plowing at one time in a field. Uh, I had saw it on the internet, uh, an association out in Iowa was attempting to break it with horses, so I kind of pitched it to one of our meetings one night. I said, hey guys, I said, this is mule country, and I said, 
we've probably got more than enough mules in this area to break it. So we set out to break the world record uh, for the most mules plowing, got in touch with Guinness Book of World Records, and uh, five years ago, tomorrow will actually be our five year anniversary. We, we achieved that record. Uh, Guinness told us that we had to have 61 mules in the field plowing all at one time, simultaneously. So we set out, it took us a year to get it all uh, put together. We advertised it, um, internet, uh, every equine magazine we could, we could find, everything. Uh, day of the plowing, we had seven states represented at that plowing. Uh, we had 91 mules in the field uh, that day and we actually broke the record uh, that day. So uh, the Middle Tennessee Mule Skinners own that record, uh, still stands today with 91 mules. So I mean that's just what we do. We it's just a cl pretty close knit family here. We we all kind of we talk once or twice a week. A lot of a lot of us do, you know. And uh, what are we going to do next weekend? What are we going to do next weekend? Uh, and it's just it, it's like it's like you know bass fishing, golfing. It's just our hobby. That's just what we love to do. And um, you know some people bass fish for a living. Some people hunt for a living. We, uh, we just try to carry on the generation with the mules. Uh, my great grandfather, as well as like Kerry said, he was a big mule man and uh, kind of got me hooked uh, with the mules. And uh, we, uh, we all, you know, we'll, we'll drive them, we'll mow with them, we'll plow with them. Uh, I don't know, we, and uh, I think Zach, uh, that you interviewed earlier, I think he's trying to get a little log pulling uh, put together for us. So uh, it's just something we enjoy to do, and uh, it's just I don't know. I guess it's kind of way of, way of life for us. You know, we uh, and it's something that you have to love and and want to do because, like Kerry said, it's work. Like Kerry said, you know, with Mike Moats, he was a he was a, a, a very active member in this association and him and his wife Wilma, was, uh, we just want to uh, say thank you for what they've uh, instilled in, in some of us, you know, and uh, just kind of carry that uh, tradition on, so. I would like to say one more thing. We get together every first, I mean, second, second Tuesday of every month at AJ's in Woodbury. So if anybody wants to come and just eat with us and see what it is or come and join our little club, I mean, hey, you're welcome. I mean, we like to have more people, you know, just to carry on this uh, association and come out and enjoy and meet new friends and to see what it's all about. And it's very family oriented. I mean, oh, yeah. uh, you know, you know, my, our, our kids, our grandkids, they come, you know, it, it's a family atmosphere. Uh, you, you can bring your kids, your grandkids, your wife, you know, whatever, your, your, your grandparents, you know, and everybody will have a good time. You know, it's just, that's, that's, what, that's what it's all about, just, just having a good time and, and uh, fellowshipping with people and uh, just doing what, we, what we're doing here. Love to do. Go ahead. Yes, I'm Stanley Browning and this is Anna. Yeah, yeah well, my daddy grew up working mules. He was born in 19 and 22 and instead he started working mules when he was seven years old and uh, so he worked them on up to in the I guess uh, late 40s and early 50s till tractors got got uh, more popular and everything and he told me he never wanted to look at a mule, another mule in the hind end. So I always had a passion for equine, so I got in the horse business and flew with horses for several years. Would uh, would uh, run across a mule every once in a while and keep for keep him for a while and work him to wagon. Had a riding mule or two and things. I like said until I retired and I decided that, that that's what I wanted to do and. 
we talked it over and she wanted to get a pair of horses. And, I've been riding horses uh -huh. since I was three days old. And, and I was, I said, uh -huh. just get work horses, not mules. And we've been all over the southeast riding. We've been, we went on a uh, 185 mile wagon train in uh, Alabama, uh -huh. from center Alabama to Montgomery back in March. Uh, and we've been to Loretta Lands a few times. Uh, we've been to uh, Jamestown, uh, East Fort. We've been up there several times riding, and we ride here uh, twice a year. Uh, and uh, we got a lot of other friends that have wagon trains at their houses and stuff, and we'll go uh, go ride with them. You know, different ones will uh, host one, and we'll everybody will just, you know, if they can get in, they'll fill in. And, and it's like this right here, we'll just set up camp wherever. We ain't got to have nothing special or special campgrounds or nothing. If we do, that's nice, but we don't have to. And uh, it's just a camaraderie that with, between the mule people. If somebody needs help, everybody will go help them. I bought this wagon. It was um, uh, built at uh, Buck's wagon, wagon Shop down in Alabama. And uh, we done a little more things, a few more things to it and, and everything. Of course, we put uh, comfortable uh, bucket seats in them out of uh, automobiles and things and springs on them and, and stuff to make a ride a little easier. Uh, we've got three or four different wagons. I've got another one sitting up yonder and uh, we have, a, have an old time uh, Owensboro wagon that we uh, uh, redone and everything we use it for parades and stuff and it was actually that iron tired wagon was bought at hillis hardware right up here in mcmimble yeah and uh so um uh, so how many events do you usually take well, there's a fella, uh, another thing we do, Jimmy Yates up at, uh, on uh, Highway 8 up there, we go to his place and haul people when he opens up his little town up there. I'd like to thank Mr. Kerry King for having us out this afternoon. Uh, it's pretty weather, we got a good time for a fall wagon train for Middle Tennessee Mule Skinners. Uh, my name is Zach Odom, I'm from Morrison, Tennessee. I own and operate Zach Odom Mule Logging. You can find us on Facebook or YouTube. And uh, what we do, uh, we're a select hardwood timber company that select cuts hardwood timber here in the Morrison, McMinnville, Manchester areas. Uh, basically what we do, we use mules instead of skidders, uh, chainsaws instead of feather bunchers. Uh, we go in and select cut timber according to species, size, whatever the foresters and the landowners needs are uh, for the time. And uh, <clears throat> the reason, I guess, why we prefer mules versus skidders, well, the main reason is is because it's my background and I love working mules and being with them and being around them. And I kind of got that from my grand grandfather. And uh, and two, working in, I love working in the woods, working with chainsaws, uh, cutting timber, uh, and just being in the woods, I like that. Uh, and coming from a cable skidder background, in my younger days uh so i've been on both sides of that uh, with skidders and with mules i prefer working mules just being around them and then also i like working the mules mainly because you don't tear up quite as much young timber uh we don't pull tree length timber like skidder crews do uh the general rule of thumb is with skidder crew whenever you fell a tree you're going to top it you're going to hook it to a skidder and you're going to go and however you got your skid roads cut, a lot of times there's curvy, because it's hilly in this part of the country too, you're gonna have curvy roads, and every time you make a, a round around a curve with a skidder, you're gonna skin up young timber in that curve, versus where with mules, we cut our logs up, we buck our logs in the woods to log length, and then pull the logs out one at a time, or two at a time, depending on the size. Uh, you know, we've got a short, Bob truck that we haul our logs to the mill on. Uh, we still run a Savannah side loader truck. They were made in uh, Savannah, Tennessee in the uh, 60s and 70s. We're still running some old technology. Uh, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? And uh, you know, in today's society, a lot of our mechanized loggers uh, are running well over 50% plus operating expense cost for their income off of timber that they're harvesting, uh, which they, they can get a lot more production, which uh, justifies the mechanical crews. Uh, but with the mechanical crews, they're running, you know, 50 plus percent 
operating expense where us we're running somewhere around 35 to 38 percent so we don't have to chase the dollar quite as hard as uh, mechanized crews do so it doesn't push us to be in the woods in adverse conditions when it's raining uh, and whatnot whereas uh, mechanical crews you know they kind of need to be working even though it's bad weather uh, but one advantage we have over that is when it is raining we can still work because you know the mules ain't near as heavy and they're not going to tear up the ground uh, like skidders do and i'm not going to say you know mules and skidders i'm not trying to pin one against the other it's a totally different operation whenever you're looking at uh, skidding timber with mules versus skidding timber with skidders if you're in a hurry and need land payments you know now need money quick a mechanized crew and uh a mechanized crew is the way to go you know a mule logging slow uh, but the advantage to mule logging when we're done and we leave there's no there's not much damage you will have some damage due to felling trees I mean you're gonna have some collateral damage anytime you cut a tree down and it falls you're gonna have a certain amount of trash left tops we don't have a good market in our area in middle Tennessee for pulpwood and uh, you know it's hard to market pulpwood it's you know it doesn't pay enough per ton to justify hauling it and we can't haul enough anyway to justify it uh, so we try to stick with saw logs you know and uh, these mule sales uh, and these wagon trains you know there's a lot more people that go on wagon trains versus like doing what i'm doing logging or farming with horses and mules anymore so to get to socialize much and to see people you, you just about got to go to these wagon trains and uh, you know, for us to get to see some of our old friends and make some new ones, uh, it, it's it's a good thing to get to see people because you don't know when the last time you may get to see them. You know, every year as we go to the sales and wagon trains and whatnot, there's less and less people. You know, Grady and Kerry both mentioned Mac Moats. He was a good friend to all of us. And uh, Mac passed away this past year and we all miss him. You know, we these older ones have taught me a lot. I've been lucky enough to rub shoulders with quite a few of them that has really helped me in my logging business. It's helped me in my ability to be able to get mules and get them broke, well broke, to a point of making them usable. Uh, and I'm very thankful for that. And uh, I've always felt like I've owed a small portion of that back to them uh, for them teaching me and helping me along. So I have started my own YouTube channel. You can look it up, Zach Odom Mule Logging. You can follow our work right there. And I answer most people's questions on those videos on the YouTube. Uh, but I started that primarily for people that were interested in mule logging, uh, but didn't, that don't have anybody close by that can teach them anything, that can show them anything. I've been blessed and fortunate to have people that taught me a lot and shared with me. Uh, so I felt like it's my duty to give back to them. All right, I'm Grady Jowers Jr. And I'm president of Middle Tennessee Mule Skinners. And uh, I've been president about five or six years We've had a lot of good events. We've promoted the mules and wagon trains and all kinds of sort of events, mule shows. And we've all my got me and my guys all, we've judged you know, almost every mule show in this area. And uh, we just, uh, we want it to be enjoyable and have a working stock still be working when I'm dead and gone, that's what I want. Um, what got you into this? My dad. When I was 18 years old, I was breaking a coat. He come out there in the yard and told me, he said, boy, I said, you won't never know nothing about a, breaking a horse till you break a pair of mules. And I started doing it right then. <laughs> I bought, got me a pair of mules and broke them. Kept them for about eight years. And, and I got married and had to, had to quit because I couldn't afford mules at that time. So anyways, I, it, and I was, it was 50 years later that I uh, got back into mules. So I'm, uh, and I like them. I really like them. I'm telling you, I'm, I do more mule trips than I guess anybody I know. <laughs> as far as that, me and my wife do. And my granddaughter, my daughter, my son-in-law, we all ride horses and we all drive mules and just enjoy it. Hi, I am Cindy Odell with Dixie Longyears Magazine. And Dixie Long Ears is a promotional tool for the draft mules. And this is a good example of the mules that we promote. 
These girls are 17 hands plus. They're five years old and they are considered a draft mule. They're out of a Belgian mare and what they call a mammoth jack. And a mammoth jack may stand 14.2 and above and the most popular ones are about 15 hands. These animals are unique. They are a great educational tool. There is groups that work these animals. They go to schools to educate the kids. They teach kids that these animals can provide you with food on the table. They can work a garden for you. They can put food on your table. They can provide you recreation. The promotion that we do with Dixie Long Ears is an education basis. It is solely the purpose of promoting the draft meal. Uh, they can work, they can attack, they literally can work any piece of machinery on a farm with the right equipment to hook to it. They will run a motor. They will not run from it. They are not upset with traffic, uh, sirens. All of these mules are very calm and it's like the more you spend time with them, the more you learn them, the more amazed you can be. So if you're interested in it, DixieLongEars.com. This is a great place to start. We can hook you up with somebody if you want to start with a small wagon and an older team and learn what you're doing. There is people all over this country that love to share the knowledge they have on these mules. And you would be surprised at these mules, they do weddings now. They haul people in downtown Nashville. They are, when you go to Bishop, California, uh, these are king. These mules are the boss. You can literally only take a horse to Bishop mule days if it's pulling a pack string. That's the only way a horse is allowed on the grounds. So there is so many places that just these mules are, are golden. I mean, when we get ready to show these mules, they'll come on with their dress harness, their feet are painted. I can squat down behind any of mine, paint their feet. Uh, they're, they're just immaculate when you put, we do four across. Uh, we've pulled the Queens at Columbia for the past four or five years. Our girls are a little bit broader than these and they're over 17 hands and we put them four across. And when you see them all decked out in their harness, shining, feet painted, coming through 60,000 people watching the parade, I mean, it's just breathtaking. And they are that they are that loving and kind. So it's a great tool, it's a great education tool for grandparents to reach grandchildren. Uh, it's a gap that can be filled. And there is a lot of third and fourth generation people that work mules. And so it's really interesting to all the events, the places that you can go with them is just, it's unlimited. Hello and good morning, I guess. I get maybe afternoon. My name is Danny Vaughn, and uh, like I said last night, I'm this uh, belong to Middle Tennessee Mule Skinners, and uh, this is the third day of our annual fall ride. Uh, the good Lord's blessed us with a beautiful day today, good little breeze and stuff, so it's good and cool on us and the mules. Uh, today we've got 16 wagons and uh, probably 15, 10 or 15 horse riders and, and uh, just have a good time and, and uh, enjoy the fellowship with everybody. And we've got people uh, 
from surrounding counties, Jamestown, Cookville. Um, got, he even got one wagon, I think. He's from down almost Alabama today. So uh, it just, uh, it's just a good event to, to be a part of and enjoy. And, uh, you know, we're stopped here for lunch right now. My name is Travis Owens Whitehead. This is my husband, PJ Owens Whitehead. We're one of the owners. Well, the owners of Owens Market. We're located at 7089 Short Mountain Road here in McMinnville, out in the Blues Hill community. This is the third year that we've had the Mule Skinner Wagon Train come and visit us. We appreciate them stopping by now for three years. Uh, and we appreciate each and every single person that comes by and visit us. Uh, so again, we're located out here at 7089 Short Mountain Road out here in the Blues Hill community of Warren County. Coy Flares uh, from Finners County. Clark Range, Tennessee, a little community of Grimsley where I live. Uh, raised up with a mule. Uh, took up the bad habits <laughs> later in life of fooling with them and, and uh, enjoy gathering with a group like this for, for a wagon ride. We've had a great time. Uh, the weather's been great for us and uh, just enjoy doing it. I'm Mark Smith. Uh, I'm riding today with the Mule Skinners, uh, visiting with them today. Brought my team of spotted saddle mares. Uh, I've been raising these spotted horses for about 43 years. Always got some colts for sale. If uh, anybody looking for a colt, you can contact me. And uh, we just come out today, gonna do, I think, about a 12, 15 mile ride today and uh, just enjoying the day.